calculator. I don't want you to do anything on the calculator. We're going to get to calculator, but not today. So this chapter will be another calculator type test. Okay. But I, I typically have a calculator and a non-calculator portion because I will be asking you silly, simple questions like the square root of 100. Okay. But then I will have, and I don't want you to use a calculator for that, but then I will ask you other questions. What's the square root of 10.6? And you will need a calculator for that. All right. So this entire chapter deals with square roots. What's your question? This entire, who's got the extra ones? I do. This entire chapter deals with square roots. Here we go. We are going to start off by this, uh, start off this uh, lesson talking about something called perfect squares. Perfect squares. Don't write this down yet. But a perfect square is a square of an integer. All right, square of an integer. Somebody give me an integer. One, one times one is one, one is a perfect square. Somebody give me another integer. What? Seven, seven times seven is 49. 49 is a perfect square. Do I have everyone's attention? Okay. You start off with an integer. You square that integer. Answer. Nine. The answer is the perfect square. This is the perfect square. Okay. It's not three. It's not three times three. It's not three squared. It's the answer to when you take an integer and you square it. These, these numbers right here. There's, there are an infinite number of them, but there's also a lot of numbers that are not perfect squares. Eight is not a perfect square. There's not a number times itself that's eight. Okay. Four. Squared is two. Six. Four squared is oh, 16. 16 is the next perfect square. Notice there's a lot of numbers between nine and 16 that aren't on this list. 10 is not a perfect square. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Those are not perfect squares. So perfect squares aren't all the numbers, some of them. What's the next perfect square bigger than 16? It turns out that just like when you memorize your multiplication table, these are what you have to memorize. You have to memorize your perfect squares. Now, how many multiplication tables did you memorize? Up through what? Uh, Up through 12, right? We are going to make you memorize the first, not 12, the first 16 perfect squares. It's actually the first 17, but uh, the first 16 to have numbers. So these in yellow are the numbers that you will have memorized. Actually, you're memorizing two things. What are the numbers and where they come from? Six squared is 36. 36 is the perfect square. Box one, write the first 16 perfect squares. I'll help you get started. One times one is? One, one is, it's, it's zero is actually the first perfect square. But one is our first perfect square. Because one times one is one. One is the perfect square. Two times two is? Four. Four is your next perfect square. Two is not a perfect square. Three is not a perfect square. But four is your next perfect square. The next perfect square it is. And away you go, the first 16. So it goes one, four, nine, so forth and so on. Those are your perfect squares. This seems like a silly thing to do. These are the numbers that you have to memorize. The first 16 perfect squares. Now, tonight for homework, there might be some that are larger than this, but they will be recognizable. Four times four is? That's your next perfect square. The next one is? 25. The next one is? 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, keep going, and then we get to the ones you don't know. So you're like, well, I don't need to memorize these. I know that, yeah, you don't know 13 through 16. 13 squared is? 169. 14 squared is? 196. Look at the two numbers. You can see that there's right a pattern, right? 
225. 15, it's, it, you have to memorize it. It's 225. And 16 squared is. Those are your first 16 perfect squares. We will be using, and this is called box one. I will say refer back to box one. This is what I mean. Box one lists the perfect square. So 25 is a perfect square. It's made by squaring five. 225 is a perfect square. It's made by squaring 15. We good, box one? Okay. The inverse of addition is? Right? If we start with a number and we add five to it, it changes. We want to go back to what we started with. Well, what's the inverse of adding five? That's what inverse means. It undoes an operation. What's the inverse of multiplication? Okay. If we start with 10 and we multiply by five, we get 50. If we want to go back to 10, you would. That's what inverse means. So what's the inverse of squaring? Okay, for those of you that didn't know this, we learned it last year. The inverse of squaring, it's our fifth inverse, there are more, our fifth inverse, and it's the inverse of squaring is square rooting. Okay, the inverse of squaring, if you want to undo the operation of squaring, well, you take a square root. All right, so this symbol, not division symbol, different, it's called the square root symbol. It's technically not even called the square root symbol, it is technically called the radical symbol. I didn't tell you this last year, but this year, there's a number that goes right here, right? It's called the index. The number underneath is always called the radicand, but the number that goes right there, you're like, what number? Well, some calculators put that number there, others don't. But all calculators, if you look hard, and some use an X, some use a Y, they'll put an X here and a Y right here. Because this can be any number, including fractions and decimals. You just didn't learn about this in seventh grade. You learned about in eighth grade. Okay. This year we will be doing more than square roots. If it is a square root, guess what the number is right there? If it's a square root, guess what the number is right there? It's going to be a two. If it's a cube root, it's going to be a three. If it's a fourth root, it's going to be a four. So forth and so on. All right. So those are the things that we're going to be dealing with this year. We'll be taking, yes, today, square roots, most of this chapter square root, but we will have a class on cube roots, okay? But the two is always there. We are just lazy. We leave it off. If there's no number there, it is implied that it is a two. The square root of nine does the inverse of squaring. So if you think to yourself, is there a number multiplied by itself that is nine, that number is? Three, but three times three can be written as either nine or. And I said that squaring is the inverse of square rooting. In other words, what's in red there cancel each other out. That's why the answer is three. So not because we made it up, it's because these two are inverse operations of each other. If you ever square something and then it take a square root, well, they cancel each other out. Why would I do that? Well, because remember, we're taking the square root nine. Square root of 25, literally ask yourself what number times itself is 25? Five. Five. five times five can be written as five squared. These two would cancel each other out and you're left with five. Why am I showing you this? No one does from here to here. You just memorize box one and you say that the square root of 16 is, well, look at box one, find 16. Look to the left, the answer is four or is it eight? Because wait a minute, 8 times 2 is 16. Mm. It's, not That's not it's not itself, though. It's got to be a number multiplied by. So even though 8 times 2 is 16, we need a number that's multiplied by itself. That number is 4. Square root of 64. Eight. If you don't have it memorized, you take box 1. You find 64 on the list. There it is. You look to the left. It's 8. That's how you use box 1. Okay. Eighth grade, you get more complicated square roots than last year. What's the answer? Okay, this is complicated because there's actually two things going on here. What two things are going on here? What? There's a square root and there's also a negative. But we could call that also subtraction. So we're subtracting 
a square root. So we use PEMDAS, GEMDAS. What's the square root of 49? So this is subtract seven. In other words, it's negative seven. No, you said subtract. Yeah, that's the same thing. Negative seven, subtract seven, same thing. Okay, eighth grade stuff. If the negative is where? In front or on the outside of the radical symbol, you get an answer, yes? Where's the negative now? Yeah. So what number times itself is negative nine? Yeah. What? What's negative three times negative three? Yeah. So, negative so three what number times, times itself is negative nine? Yeah. Negative three. three times three is nine, not negative nine. What number times itself is negative nine? Doesn't work. So guess what the answer to this is? Yes, Type it into your calculator for those of you that have a calculator. Square root of negative nine. Try it. See what your calculator says. Uh, domain error. It says domain error. That means that you inputted something it doesn't like. What? The square root of negative nine, you will get an error of some sort unless your calculator has been put into imaginary mode. Oh, this calculator and so can yours be put into imaginary mode. Well, I'm not showing you that until high school. Mm -hmm. Turns out this does have an answer, but it's not a real number. And I, by that, I mean literally, we don't call it a real number. There is an answer to this on your calculator if you put your calculator in what's called imaginary mode. And like, are you making this? No, there are things called imaginary numbers. This is one of them. For eighth grade, guess what the answer is? No solution. There is no number times itself that's negative. So you get to high school. Uh, junior or sophomore yeah. years when you get told what the answer to that is. By the way, it's 3i. What's the I answer? Guess what it's called? Imaginary. Oh. <laughs> right. And if you put your calculator into imaginary, it's not called imaginary. What's it called? Called a complex number system. All right. Now stop what you're doing. Look at the board. Second eighth grade square root problem. Do you see the problem? Yes, it's a I don't fraction. know what fraction multiplied by itself is this. So here's what you do. You ready? We take the square root of the top and the bottom separately. If you have a square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the top separately and the square root of the bottom the square root of nine is three the square root of 25 ah. is so what's the square root of nine twenty fifths uh, three fifths which is a decimal of yes hey i already did that yeah well we're on to something else now i'll show you at the end of class okay if you have the square root of a fraction you take the square root of the top square root of the bottom square root of one is Square root of 100 is? So what's the square root of one one hundredths? One tenth. Who's lost? Do box two, please, all by yourself. Do box two, please, all by yourself. Now, so it's supposed to, you do have calculators on your desk. Remember, none of these, I want you to use a calculator. These are all from box one. Every one of these, box one. Angie, top left, what do we got? What? Answer is? It's what? It is three. All right. Grayson, this one, what's the answer? Brecton, Abby, so most of us don't have it memorized yet, we got to look at box one, 225, oh it was 15, so four fifteenths, very good, okay, Jenna, Nate, okay, no, we are not doing it with a calculator. You're looking at box one. What's the square root of 16? 
What's the square root of 16? Find 16 and then look to the left. Find 16 and look to the left. I know what he's doing. Except it was negative square root 16, so the answer is what? David, last one. 13. We good? All right. Here we go. Now, depending upon when some people were already taught this, some people weren't. This is new stuff for most of you. If I taught you, I've never shown you this before. So here's where you're like, okay, I kind of already did the other stuff that I'm going to pay attention. You ready? New stuff. Jaden, you paying attention? Here we go. Is this in box one? No. There is no 33 in box one. Okay. So you ready? Yeah. Certainly you could grab your calculator. You could type it in, right? This is not done with a calculator. Here's how it's done. Step number one, find box one. Step number one, find box one. I want you to tell me what two numbers squeeze 33. In other words, what number is slightly smaller than 33 in box one? And what number is slightly bigger than 33 in box one? What do you got? She said 25 and 36, yes? So here's how you set it up. This doesn't say 33, it says the square root of 33. If the square root of 33 is a number, and it is, then the square root of 25 would be bigger or smaller? How could it be bigger? You're saying that 25. I didn't say 25, I said the square root of 25. How could the square root of 25 be bigger than the square root of 33? Because the number is bigger. The number is bigger. Yeah. 33 is bigger than 25. Therefore, the square root of 25 must be smaller than the square root of 33. You told me the next number was? 36. So 36, because 36 is bigger than 33, the square root of 36 must be bigger than the square root of 33. Now, why did I do this? I put the smaller one on the left. Yeah. I put the smaller one on the left, the bigger one on the right, because I know what the square root of 25 is. What's the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of 36? Six. So I, know, I don't know what the square root of 33 is, but I do know that it's between... It's somewhere between five and six. Further, without a calculator, is 33 closer to 25 or is it closer to 36? 36. So it's got to be bigger than 5.5. Take a guess. So someone with a calculator now do the square root of 33. What's the square root of 33? You already told me that the answer was 5. Point, listen, please. You already told me the answer was 5.7 without a calculator. You see how easy that was? But it does require that you have box one memorized. Okay, yes. Once we do a couple of these. All right, the square root of 40. Look at box number one. What two perfect squares squeeze the square root of 40? 36 and 49. Everybody, 36 and 49? Yeah. So I don't know what the square root of 40 is, but I do know it's between the square root of 36 and 49. Now we're stopping. And a, a, a moment of honesty. Who's sitting there right there and saying, I have no idea where they're getting these numbers from? You got box one? You see the number in red? Give me the two numbers that are just smaller and bigger than 40. In box one. That's where I'm getting those numbers from. It's always done this way. To get to your answer, the square root of 36 is? The square root of 49 is? So I don't know what the square root of 40 is, but I do know it's between 6 and 7. Stop me if you're lost from that. Is 40 closer to 36 or is it closer to 49? How far is it away from 36? It's four away from there. It's nine. So it's got to be smaller than, way smaller. But the middle between six and seven is 6.5. You just said it's closer to six. 
So what's a good guess? 6.8. 6.1 would be the square root of 37. Wait. Okay. So what are we guessing? 6.3. Take your calculators, do the square root of 40. You literally got to the answer without a calculator simply by doing some estimation. Jackson. Okay. How far is 40 away from 36? How far is 40 away from 49? We know that. And by the way, this is the square root of six, uh, this is six and this is seven. We know the number that's in the middle between six and seven is 6.5, right? I'm not literally looking at these numbers. I'm looking at where's the middle. The middle is 6.5, right? But you told me 40 is closer over here. Here's the middle, but you're over here somewhere, right? You're closer to the 36 than you are to the 49. Therefore, I don't know what's the middle between 6 and 6.5. If this had been the square root of 37, you're, you're almost bang on 36, right? So maybe 6.1. By the way, are we guessing or are we doing a, a real math here? We are guessing. So that's why it's an approximation. But it's a good approximation. Jaden. My calculator Okay. So uh, 6.3, 6.4. One more time. Here we go. The square root of five. Jenna, look in box one. Give me the two numbers that squeeze five. Four and. <laughs> you don't have no fingers. Four and. There you go. So four and nine. Yes. Jackson. Look at box one. Well, what number is smaller than five? Four. What number is bigger than five? Six. Six is not a perfect square. Yeah, it is. It's what? These are your perfect squares. Yeah, it's a perfect square. Six is not. Where do you see six? This is one, four, nine, sixteen, and twenty-five. I have perfect squares. All right. Now, time out. I'm going back to Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> do you see? Box one. Yes. Kai was confused because there is a six there, but six is not the perfect. You guys are talking over me. Six is not the perfect square. It's what six times six. That's the perfect square. Thirty-six is the perfect square. So when you're looking at the list of the perfect squares, what's smaller than five? What number perfect square is bigger than five? What's the next perfect square? After four comes nine on your list, right? Five's closer to four. Hold on, we're not there yet. What? Jackson. No, I know, I'm, I'm there. When you wrote these numbers down, those are not your perfect squares. Those are where the perfect squares come from. These are your perfect square. One times one is? These are your perfect squares. That's what you're looking at to throw here and here. So five, well, what number is smaller than five? What number is bigger than five? You see where I'm getting the numbers from now? Jackson, what's the square root of four? What's the square root of nine? Is five closer to four or is it closer to nine? Okay, so what's your guess? The middle would be 2.5, right? If five was perfectly between five and nine, four and nine, it would be 2.5, but it's really close to there. So what's your guess? 2.2, 2.1, right? By the way, that is the answer calculator people, yes? Square root of five is? 2.2. 2.2. Now, guessing 2.1 would be a good guess. 2.666. 2.666 is a horrible guess. What? Okay. What's that? Two? The way it would be in the middle is if the difference between this number and this number were exactly the same. For instance, not this number, but if you were four away on this side and four away on that side, then you would be smack dab in the middle. 
On this side, we're only one away. We're four away. So you're way over here, really close to the square root of four, but you're not, right? That's why we say it's about 2.1 or 2.2 is actually the real answer. All right, who's lost? You gotta be honest. Jackson was absolutely 100% lost. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's good now, but we will get him there. Jackson, let's do this one together. This is box four. 66, give me the two numbers in the perfect square that squeeze 66. You know, I want the numbers, not the eight and the nine. But you gave me the right answer of where we're going though, right? So let's see, 64 and 81, yes? Jackson already took the square root. He said, therefore, it's between, okay? Is 66 closer to 64 or closer to 81? Now remember, if it were perfectly in the middle, 8.5, right? That would mean that if I subtract these two numbers, I would get like a 10, and over here I would get a 10. They're not. You subtract these two numbers, you get a two. You subtract those two numbers, you get what, 15? Or is it, yeah, 15. It's really close to that number. Therefore, what's your guess? Okay, probably 8.1 or 8.2 would be a better guess, but 8.3 is at least in the right direction. Okay, because look, you're only two numbers off. And I don't mean like two, you add two to 6.1 or 8.1. I just mean that you, you've got to kind of, you're thinking of a balance to have really close to 64. Okay, so uh, it's definitely closer to eight. Anybody doing a calculator? 8.1, 8.2? 8.1. It's 8.1. 8 all right, Abby, 142, give me the two numbers that squeeze 142. One what? Okay. Which one are you closer to? So square root of that is? The square root of this is? So you're between 11 and 12, you're awfully close to what? So 11 point, you're just too off. And it's a really big number. Or 11.9. I don't know, calculator, somebody do it. 11.9. It's 11 point, 11.8 11 is a perfectly good guess though, right? Okay. Who's lost? Okay, don't, don't be someone sitting. Genevieve, you're, you're squinch, squinching up your forehead. I can't hear you, what'd you say? Okay, cool. All right, last thing. Uh, it is the most challenging thing we do. It's what we'll finish with. Okay. There are two types of numbers so far that we've learned. One is called a rational number. And then the other one is what we're doing right now. It has a different name. Okay. So write this down, please, box 5A. If you are a rational number, by definition, you can be written as a fraction. However, fractions have to be written with integers. You can't write a decimal number. You certainly can't write a, well, we haven't learned what an irrational number is. You can't have an irrational number in it either. It has to be written with integers. There's a numerator, denominator, and they're both integers. And the bottom of the denominator can't be zero, by the way. That's the definition of rational. So three, well, that's not a fraction, but I can make it as a fraction by. Now I have a fraction where both numbers are integers. Two fifths, well, it is a fraction, duh. 0. 0.45 is a fraction? Yeah, because it's 45, yeah. Over, 45 over 100 and then reduced whatever. 0. 0.3 repeating is a fraction. Anybody remember this 1. one? 3. What? 1.3. No. How about right. one third? Okay. Or three ninths. Right. One third is an approximation, right? Three ninths is what it really is, but that reduces to one third, right? Square root of 25 is a rational number. I just said uh, we can't have square roots. But what is the square root of 25? And five can be written as five over one. So here is a list of everything that is a rational number. The list is too long to remember. We simply just remember it can be written as a fraction. Are you ready? This is a hard thing for eighth graders. 
If this is a rational number, what's an irrational number? None of that. None of this. Mm -hmm. It is usually easier to define an irrational number than a rational number. Okay, so here is an irrational number. It's a number that can't be written as a fraction. If you are irrational, you cannot be written as a fraction. You're like, sure you is, just put it over one. But remember, the fraction has to have integers. You can write the square root of 25 over one because the square root of 25 really is five. That does not work when it's not a perfect square. The square root of 24, well, you can't take the square root of 24. You can only give me an estimation. You've already encountered one so far in your math career uh, irrational number. That number is? Is pi. Pi is your first irrational number. Pi is a decimal number that goes on forever, never stops. That is why you can't write it as a fraction. That's why it's irrational. All right. Write down these three and then we're done for today. Pi is an irrational number. A decimal number that never repeats. So it's not repeating decimal. And never terminates. That means it goes on forever. If you see the dot, 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 and there's not a pattern, it is irrational. And then lastly, what's the difference between the square root of 25 and the square root of 26? Well, square root of 25 is in box one. It's a perfect square. The square root of 26, not perfect squares. These are the three. I would anticipate you might run into some problems today when you try your homework on whether it's rational or irrational. Well, your calculator is now in imaginary mode. What's it say? It's not. 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 Wait, Guess what it says? Numbers. Real, real numbers. Okay. So now it's in real numbers. Uh, I still have three people that haven't taken their test. Uh, Hannah? I you sure? Yeah, I turned it in. I gave it to you guys. I could have swore. I feel lost, but I would have cried. Whoa, what? Yeah, Hang on a second. Except the sex. I only have one. That one. Uh, Anna. Uh, I have all my e-learners. They're taking it literally today. Well, my e-learners are always a day behind. Gabby, Lucia, yeah. Abby, Christian, Jackson. Why aren't you learning the day behind now? Because I have to record the video first, and which I'm is what we're doing right now. Normally I get up at like six or get up at like two. I do not have Hannah's test. I don't think she took the test. <laughs> All right, Donovan, any questions? All right, we will catch you on Monday, Donovan. Make sure you take your test if you haven't already taken it. Okay, bye. See ya.